Jimmy Crane's an improv nerd. Uh, you know, when I was here in like mid the mid '90s, uh, all we talked about it seemed like was game. I feel like we were talking about the idea of game. It was the it was kind of the central core of what we were when we were getting notes about our Herald, when I was giving other people notes about their Herald. Uh, Maybe not so much in class. I mean, Dell's class was very experimental and not really. Did Dell? Who about was game. who? Who brought the whole? Because when I started at the Improv Olympic, which was good three or four years before you, maybe even longer, five. The game was not something. Game was more your generation. Who maybe. was? Who? Who? I think it's. I, well, this is a total guess, but I think it probably started with. Uh, were, were, were you on the the larger version of Blue Velveeta? The, I, I the was team, you were around at that time, but you weren't on Blue Velveeta, right? No, and then we did Comedy Underground. They, you were remember they broke off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big coup with the, yeah, the yeah. I.O. and then they but went... But you, you weren't part of the team when they were at I.O.? No. Okay. So Blue Velveeta was like the big team before Big the house team, like Jay Leggett, Kevin yeah. Dorff, Brian McCann. Yeah, really uh, great Tom team. Booker, Susan Messing. Yeah. So uh, I think it kind of started around the time that they were... Because I studied for a year with Jay Leggett before I started mm -hmm. at I.O., and Jay taught me game. He taught it with a little bit, you know, different kind of language than, than how we later taught it at ECB. But uh, in any case, so we, we talked about it. It was very much this, this thing. We go to New York. It continues to be this thing I explore for another seven years teaching. Uh, and I come back, and it doesn't feel, I mean, and I'm to maybe totally wrong about this because I'm not in every, I don't know what everybody's teaching these days, but it doesn't feel like people are teaching it uh, very much at all. Or you'll get some some game like things, you know. I think people teach it, but they don't, um, maybe not as aggressively or as single mindedly as as they do at UCB. But so. the U UCB has almost made it their own, you know. Like sure, it's changed. Yeah. And and the thing that I realize is like the the way that they lay it out in the book. Uh, it's a I gotta very, get. I gotta get. A it's copy. a very nice. It's a very good way to think about it. You start with what's the situation? What they, what's the base reality of the scene? Right, then you discover what is un what hap what is the thing in it that happens that's unusual, mm -hmm. uh, and then you have to turn that unusual thing through justifying it into kind of a a, a rule that you can play from there for there that point forward. Like you're always gonna you're always gonna make choices that are in line with this this decision you make early on in the scene. Um, and the thing that I realized is, you know, reading the book, it's like it doesn't quite matter how you get there. A lot of people kind of talk about what's that one thing that you're doing in the scene. I mean, um, Mick at the Annoyance does. They they talk about what's your thing, what's your deal, right? And it's similar. Um, so it's not completely out of the picture here, but uh, yeah, they have a very particular way of of talking about it. <laughs>